Like all the great, she was made an Indian. Scarcely a week goes by that Helen's calendar doesn't call them away to a conference or a lecture. At the Dyker Street Nursery, they're experimenting with placing sightless children and seeing children together. It is important to accustom the blind to the give and take of normal, everyday life. At the Lexington School for the Deaf, she watches children at play. Today they have a new game. From blowing a piece of paper, they are learning to say who, what, when, why like ordinary children. In class, she follows the progress of the older girls in learning talk. Watching their struggles with speech, we can perhaps more easily understand why Helen says if she had a choice between her two afflictions, she would choose blindness. The deaf, cut off from the world both by lack of hearing and lack of speech, need all the encouragement she can give. But perhaps those to whom Helen gives her time most gladly are those who, like herself, are both deaf and blind. There are perhaps 25,000 of them in this country. And in the 50 years since Helen graduated from Radcliffe, there is only one up to have achieved a college degree. Robert Smithers of St. John's in Brooklyn. But they enjoy life and work like the rest of us. Their fortitude should make us perhaps recall, in respect to our own small difficulties, the truth spoken long ago. I cried because I had no shoes until I met a man who had no feet.